little babies. You, this guy uh, is he in the in the thing? No. No, I'll send him another invite. But it's uh, is he um, Ian? Oh, that's not what you sent me. Yeah, it is. No. No, it isn't. I will fucking pull up the goddamn email and shove it down your goddamn throat. Mail to. This is the the that's one that the, is... that's the link. So mail to Ian at I. You fucking simple minded piece of shit. And What's the already... link? What is a mail to link? I've never heard of a fucking mail to link in my life. That's what, what is it's... mail to. That's what it's. That's what it's. Uh, it's mail to. Yeah, but the, it's all underlined. I don't know. And mail to perfect. And mail to is the email. And mail to. Did you hear that? I'll, I'll try it without the mail too, but why is mail too underlined? Well, and by a- the way, the way that you fucking communicate on this shit is bananas. Like, send the link yourself, you fucking tool. I have to go and type everything out like it's 1999 www. This shit. Like, just send the link. Don't screenshot, you lazy fucking fat bastard. All right. That's- first of all, first of all, you got mad that I sent it on text. Now I've upgraded and sent it to you via the email. Yeah, we're doing it and one now step I can't, at a time. Now I can't even do that right. We're taking it one step of a, at a time. Text one is day. ridiculous when uh, uh, the daily text chain in that is 75 fucking text messages. And I and fucking forth. get it. So I sent it e- to the email. I mean, I understand why you screenshot it at that standpoint, but just type the bitch out so I can get it. And what is and under... The whole thing is underlined. Mail to. Well, that could be our first question, Richard. If he shows up. Now he's probably pissed. I'm, I would be. Guy's a CEO of million dollar companies and shit. Nah, he'll have fun with us. I saw your face. He didn't want to see you anymore. Gentlemen, Richard. how are you? Good. Hey, how are you? Ian, how you doing? We're amazing over here in Nevada. All right. Let's let's uh let's get the elephant out of the room here. We have to apologize. We were getting mad at you because no we no no sick- no no. I didn't. Rich is stupid. Go on, Rich. I'm just always mad. Uh, we thought you were late, and then we realized that the way stop saying we. It's you. The email was <laughs> sent to us, and I don't know if you've gotten this before. You are on the Simple Mind Sports Show. It was sent to me in a screenshot. First of all. Oh, and it said mail to colon in at ngbn.tv but mail to and then everything else was underlined as if that was the clickable email not just ian so that's where the that's where your invite was sent to until we just had a screaming match at each other and tried the other way and now you're here you know that's a product of the platform that we were using to communicate i think it automatically does that huh see and i am vindicated thank you <laughs> It does. It automatically does that. So when you're communicating with anybody that they like, when you guys put, if you were to put your email in, it would do the exact same thing. So you can't just click it and copy and paste. Like you have to, you you have have to to, like 1999 www. uh, Let's see if we can make this thing work. I think you can click it and it'll go straight to your email client, but I'm not sure. I don't know. I have no idea. I just know this. I know that you guys screwed up. That's what I know. <laughs> Again, I was gonna, just about guys, to say, I'm going to no, blame rich, it on you. Rich. <laughs> I'm sorry. One of the two of you. I'm not going to take sides because I'm just meeting you for the first time. But Okay. Well, I'll tell you this. I'll thing. own up to this one. This one is was on me. I had the communications. But generally, it's Ray's fault. He is the bottom. Okay, there you go. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> Um, all right. Uh, so after all that, uh, let's do the intro here. Welcome to the Simple Minds Sports Show, our conversation with Ian Hill. Um, welcome to the show. Ian, uh, this is how you are described on multiple sites as I have seen it. A humanitarian, business leader, award-winning social in, uh, innovator, professional development pioneer, and world record breaker. 
That's a yeah, uh, that's I a got bragging. Good, I got a good publicist, clearly. I guess I don't know. <laughs> I, I saw that on two different platforms, by the way. Uh, but today you're here to talk about all of that, but also, uh, you know, um, uh, the the uh, season to save a life, where you're going, you're trying to break the record for the oldest uh, college football player um, in America. So that's what we want to kick our kick our show off with, and I'll kick it over to Ray for a couple questions here. My question, why football? I mean, colleges now have, you know, table tennis, uh, eSports. You know, you can just be playing a video game. Uh, I'm 37. I can't, it hurts to get out of bed, and you're going to be trying to go out there with young college athletes and hurting your body being a long snapper. Uh, why football? Okay, so I'm 50. When I play, I'll be 58. Damn. And uh, Dude, humble, humble, humble. <laughs> he looks better than so, both of us. Humble yeah. bread confidence that he's going to play, too. So middle-aged middle -aged men are 70% more likely to take their own life than any other segment of the population. I had my own experiences and challenges with depression and thoughts of suicide. I was uh, at the pinnacle of my life. I was doing fabulous things on both sides of the North American border and being recognized for such. And I walked downstairs on my 50th birthday and told my family I was gonna kill myself. Who can explain the human mind? Um, it didn't matter how many awards. It didn't matter how many keys to the city. It didn't how, matter how many compliments or accolades. I went home and thought that I was a piece of shit. And that took me on a really dark journey. And that dark journey would involved figuring out how I could take my own life every day. Driving down the freeway here in Northern Nevada, I-80, and, I and thinking, you know what? If I just jack my steering wheel to the left and it flies off the side, everybody will think it's an accident. So as I navigated through that, and then through the love and care of many was able to come out of that, I said to myself, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do about this, this thing that's happening to middle-aged men, 70% more uh, than any other segment? 3,287 people will attempt suicide today. And I, I couldn't just stand idly by because I had felt it now. I had broken a world record, as you mentioned, a few years back. I gave the world's longest speech. And for your listeners, we're not doing that tonight. So <laughs> not to worry about that. Um, and frankly, sports saved me as a kid. So I knew the power of sport because it saved me. And I had broken a world record. And then there was these middle-aged men. So to answer your question directly, what better way to reach middle-aged men than do something involving college football? And I needed something that I could hold on to that would focus me, that would drive me, that would force me to be disciplined, that would challenge me to get my mind right, my nutrition right, my physicality right. So it made sense. Go be the oldest man to play college football. And originally, it was to save my own life. Wow. Well, that's certainly a powerful reason to, uh, to do anything and uh, to take on this journey for sure. Um, I, I hate to bring it down, but I don't know if it still answers the question of football because you're going to get your ass kicked. <laughs> Although, you know what? Okay, so let's talk about that. You no, do. No, no, it does a, say you want to go with a long snapper, which legit, is like. It's legit. It's a legit question. So let's talk about the reality. The reality is that I'm not going to run a four, five, four, six, forty anymore. The reality is that I'm not going to. Whoa, anymore. Have, whoa, whoa, whoa. Barry. Yeah, whoa, wait, let's wait, not wait, bury wait, the lead here. I had some wheels back in the day. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to jump and touch the rim anymore because I could touch the rim when I played in high school. I was a three-sport letterman in high school. Well, I wasn't an amazing athlete, but I was a three-sport letterman, so I was above average. So I think what you have to focus on is what can I bring? What can I bring to a Division I college football team? I can bring award-winning leadership and experience. I can win a find-a-way. I can bring a find-a-way, make-a-way attitude that's demonstrated itself in doing seven things that have never done, been done before. I can bring a long snap. I have the number one long snapping coach in the country, Chris Rubio. 13 of the long snappers in the NFL are his guys. A thousand players he has put in D Division I schools. So Chris has been working with me for a while now. I've got one of the, no I got one of the top neuro uh, psychologists in the world working me on the mental side of the game, Dr. Connor Hogan. And then Kirk Sanderson, he works with guys in the NFL combine preparation programs and puts him in first round draft choice. You know, Thibodeau was one of his guys this year. So there's a lot that we bring to the party. And finally, 
I can snap a football in 0.8 seconds to the punter. 0.75 is a starting long snapper. Now so I can snap a football and I now can I can bring a winning attitude to a team. Well, I mean, I'm sure all those guys and you know, big names there are very aware of your cause and what you're doing. And obviously that's where the focus, you know, needs to stay and pay attention to. But it is, you know, the day-to-day is not what people are going to see, right? That physical regiment that you guys are going through, the mental regiment that you guys are going through. And like Ray said, we're 36, 37 years old. <laughs> You know, I play basketball Mondays and bitch to my wife until the next Monday. So, and that's with, you know, at a, in an elementary you know gym. To be frank, if you were going to, and this is going to be graphic. If you were going to get a guy to put a gun down, it's going to have to be outlandish. Yeah. To bring him hope. So yes, it has to be something outlandish. I need to go make a division one football team. And then. Not only that, I need to practice every day. And then I need to earn playing time. No corners cut, no favors given. I need to do it right to inspire. So thankfully, yeah. the University of North Alabama, I have a tryout on July 23rd. Um, University of Idaho, I have a, a tryout on July 29th. And today, literally this morning, I got an email from uh, the head coach at William & Mary University. Um, and just asking information. Nice. So is it a long shot? Well, hell yes. But that's the only thing that would inspire. It has to be a long shot. Okay. And all these, and these guys and your coaches and, and people helping you there, like, do they think the odds are pretty long still too, or are they kind of pushing it too? Are we looking ahead to a Rudy situation where he gets on the uh, field at the end and we cheer and, you know, you made it, but um, did you, or are you going to be like, if it's a I'm handout, going, like, no, I'm not going to take it. Or is it more important for the cause to put on the uniform, to get on the field, even if it means a little bit of like the publicity got you there a little bit, or it wasn't I'm not, necessarily all merit. So here's the funny thing. There's two sides of this. Cause you said the most important size is that we bring awareness to the challenge. Men that are being affected can get the tools and the resources and the support they need. That's the most important piece. But I believe to do that, I need to go compete. I need to challenge to be a starting long snapper. A yeah. coach asked me the other day, hey, are you coming here just to get that one snap in and then you've done it and you're walking out? I said, no, I'm coming to win a national championship and I'm coming to be the starting long snapper, period. Nice. I mean, I'm not working out three three times a day to go <laughs> and it. get some kind of golf clap, right? The it's golf clap. Oh, yeah. it's not... Look at the old man. Look at how good he is. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, hey, we see don't... the old man? That was great. We no, don't wanna... Hell no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> we don't want to pity club. And, and just to be clear before Ray goes here, you do have all four years of eligibility left because if this if this thing goes really well and the Jets, who you know <laughs> haven't had a good player in 45 years or something, need somebody, you're still eligible well, for that? Here's my commitment, and this is I, I actually said this on Canadian uh, broadcasting today. Um, as soon as I play the one season here, then I'll go try out for the CFL because nice. it'll be just another part of the. And will I make the CFL? Well, no, Who knows? I mean it's uh, it's it's completely devoid <laughs> of reality. Yeah, but to inspire people, you have to do things that are completely devoid of reality. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah, good point. Uh, so you're doing a lot, like you, we said in the opening, uh, you got heads up guys, uh, you're the CEO of the national grassroots media, public speaking, humanitarian work, and, uh, you're obviously practicing to become a long snapper. Uh, when do you have time to sit down and just take a moment to breathe and, you know, have well, a moment for yourself? So, so every morning, you know, we have a regiment. So every morning at four 30, I go in my quote unquote closet and I remember what I'm doing, why I'm doing what I'm doing. It, it is a lot but I'm pissed. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm pissed. I'm pissed that guys are dying every day. I'm pissed that 24 veterans are going to kill themselves today. 24 veterans are going to kill themselves today, man. You know, yeah. if we, if the three of us were walking on a pool deck in Vegas and we were walking towards a bar and we looked over and there was three guys in the pool drowning, we wouldn't be like, Hey man, good luck to you, bro. And then yeah. go get a Mai Tai. We'd fucking jump in the water. And that's what we need to do. There has to be an urgency about this if we're going to change anything. And I'm, I'm, of course, I am excited, enthused, and um, celebrate people like Kevin Love, people like Jay Glazer, and so many others that are coming forward and saying, hey, man, 
I struggle here, I struggle there. I'm challenged here, I'm challenged there. So we are definitely seeing more conversation amongst athletes, both men and women. Obviously more and more universities are putting pieces in place to support athletes. But to be frank, the 47 year old guy, can he relate to Kevin Love? He looks at Kevin Love and says, dude, you got $400 million, like no. figure it out. No. I think, and I hope that this will be a little bit more relatable. Um, and a regular guy trying to do something crazy. And then someone looks at it and goes, shit, if he can do that, I can overcome my challenge. No. Uh, so I've been diagnosed with depression and anxiety. And I went to a therapist and she said something that like kind of opened up my eyes is that like in today's society, men really aren't like supposed to bottle, like say their emotions, you know, or t tell people their problems. It's like you're a man, you're not supposed to kind of do that stuff. Is that something that you've seen with a lot of men that you've talked to? Is that like, we just don't yeah. have the ability to like express our emotions. We just keep everything bottled up inside and don't have like an outlet for it. I think that, you know, your your counselor was wise and you were wise to heed her or his advice. I think that is a huge barrier. It's not OK, yeah. especially when you get to be 40, 50, 60. You better have your poop together. Yeah. You better have your act together and it figured out. And what are you doing whining and complaining that you can't navigate life? Yeah. And so there's definitely that, especially when we get into former athletes, especially when we get into a truck driver, a farmer, a soldier, a first responder, you know, in, in some of these quote unquote manly professions, it, the stigma is even worse if you raise your hand and say, I have a challenge. And so part of this effort, this season to save a life effort is really about saying, it's okay to stand up and say, I have mental illness, but my mental illness doesn't make me any less mentally capable or that I have less mental capacity or prevent me from doing things that have never been done before. I just got some junk, but we all got some junk. Yeah. And so let's just work through our junk and, and, and take it the best that we can and navigate it and go do amazing things for others and, and our families. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's a good point. It kind of brings me to my point and I'll be the, I don't know what antagonist or devil's advocate here. Like, where's the line on that? Right. So Ray's got a couple examples, sports examples that we've been kind of berating and the whole sports world's been berating. Uh, but I, just more in general, just in society, like the 45 year old guy, do you see it becoming like an excuse that people are making in, in, you know, there's their virtue shaming and, you know, whatever, you know, everything's got a word these days. And it just feels like, I don't know if people can't cope, then they can fall back on this. Well, my mental illness is, you know, I have a mental illness or my mental health isn't where it needs to be. And, and, you know, and that type of thing, which clearly there are people that are really hurting and have experiences that can back that up and that takes away from them. So I'm sure, you know, it's a hard thing to navigate and a hard thing to understand, but it's like, I don't know. <laughs> we're, the, we're the Western pioneers worried about mental health in that same way or society moved to a point where, you know, things are easier on a day to day so we can focus more on this. We're not worried about survival on a day to day basis. Um, those are the things I kind of think about in, in this I think realm. You, I think that a lot of people think about it and I think it's absolutely valid. The point that you're making, if a person, in my opinion, now, a person's mental illness is also not an excuse for their poor choices or behaviors. Like I have to deal with the consequences of crashing and burning. I have to sit and reconcile with my daughters who were there that day when I walked downstairs and said, I wanted to take my own life and who are frankly bitter and angry because they look at me and say, how could you put that on us kids? Why would you do that to us? I am going to have to walk that out. I am gonna to have to now do the hard work to rebuild those relationships. So from where I sit, your mental barrier challenge issue is not an excuse for behavior. I think we have to be honest and say that sometimes people whose mental health issues go beyond, it is the cause of their behavior. 
but they still have to deal with the consequences of that behavior. Yeah. You can't say that somebody is mentally stable tragically when they shoot their grandmother in the face and then go and shoot 19 kids or 19 people. Right. That person had a mental illness. There's no doubt about that, but they're going to have consequences to that. And so that was the first part of your commentary and question was, do we get to skate? No, I don't think you get to skate. I think you got to deal with the bed that you made. Yeah. The and that, part, and, and sorry to, to interrupt no, you. Okay. I, I do want to hear about your other part too. Um, Cause it's the thing I most focus on, but on that, like, obviously those are extreme examples and obviously, um, you know, certainly there's, there's mental capacity and, you know, problems there, but what about just like, I don't know, the, the person that doesn't feel like dealing with work and like well, doesn't well, show up there's, and then they, and then there's they, consequences you know, they to that. Deal right. with that, you know, it's like, no, my mental health isn't right. So I'm not coming to work today. So let's, that's what I mean. Let's talk about that piece. Right. So I think it's two part one, you are right in seven, you know, 1864, the Oregon trail where people yeah. huddled in a corner. It's a stupid about, example by me, but there, it's, I, it's, I just look at I it. I can't those. go on because it's just a gloomy day. You know what I mean? <laughs> so no, they went on or in right. where I live in Nevada, people had to find a way to win. There was a rugged individualism. So I do think our attempt, our sincere and perhaps misplaced, but genuine attempt to make things easier for our kids actually made things harder for them down the road. Yeah. It's like this mental chase for euphoria that never comes. And yeah, with and, every, and, and, with, a, and, a, and a, a desire to make sure, oh, stop crying. Let me take you to Dairy Queen. Okay. I'll take you to Dairy Queen. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah. don't want you to hurt. I don't want you to feel, dep- I don't want you to feel sad. I don't want you to feel like you've lost. Uh, and so this, this, like I said, a sincere, genuine desire to, to make sure our kids are doing really well, really well, removed adversity from kids' lives. Mm-hmm. You know, another thing from a sports standpoint that I think has impacted this. When I was a kid, you could go out for any sport. Now you might make it, you might not make it, but you could go out for the football team as a senior and you might not play, but you could make the team. You could go out as a sophomore for the basketball team. You might not play, but you could make the team. So the drive for elite athletics has removed the vehicle that used to teach perseverance, how to overcome adversity to a whole group of kids that don't get to experience that anymore because now there's only 12 kids in the gym. And there's 400 outside. So I think by removing athletics from the development of young people and only making it for the elite, we took out something that was teaching us how to cope and giving us resiliency skills. So one, you absolutely have to be accountable for your behaviors unless your mental issues or your barriers move into that clinical side where you're not of your right mind in any way, shape or form. So the guy who says, hey, I, I'm having a rough day. I'm going to stay at home. Hey, I'm having a rough day. I'm staying at home. Hey, I'm, rough, I'm having a rough day. I'm staying at home. Yes, the company can accommodate that, but for how long? Yeah. There comes a point in time. And then finally, we're starting, we have removed certain mechanisms from the development of our, of our citizens, of, of our fellow citizens that used to teach resiliency. And I think that's why you see less resilient people. Yeah. No, it, it, it's a, it's a great point. And on the sports thing, I feel like Ray and I, we've been saying it for years, the same, the same thing. We grew up with a little bit more of that. We all play, we both played high school sports and multiple sports and kind of had that, um, that upbringing as well, but it's a beautiful segue to our next question, which lightens the mood a little bit on two guys that we've been super hard on, but are in this mental health, um, kind of vein, Ray, uh, if you want. Uh, so, yeah, what's your thoughts on Ben Simmons and Kyrie Irving? Uh, both of these guys say they have mental health issues, but then uh, skip a game and then you see them out at the club partying or it's someone's birthday and they just didn't want to play that night. Uh, do you like, does this make you upset seeing like these star athletes? Like Kevin Love obviously came out, very sincere guy saying, you know, I have a problem, you know, I'm trying to address it. But these two guys, I feel like are the ones that are saying, I don't want to work today. I have mental health issues. 
So three things. One, I don't know somebody else's journey, journey who, am, who am I to judge someone's journey? Two, secondly though, when you're in a competitive environment and you're driving to winning a championship, and obviously in professional sports, when there is so much being invested from a dollars and cents standpoint, I do think it's appropriate to say to an athlete, hey, you know what? It'd be best if we just go and take you out and let you go work on your mental health issues to get yourself stable. Oh, and by the way, while we're doing that, we're probably going to have to reduce your salary. Yeah. yeah because. Yeah. Well, there's I mean, the sticking point there. Yeah. <laughs> there's a sticking point. And I, sorry to interrupt you again. I, this, this is something that we've talked about. And obviously we, you know, do the show and it's on professional sports. So we focus on it, but Naomi Osaka is another person that has been a champion for mental health. Um, but it's a sticky one for me because she, she puts a lot of her mental health problems on the pressures of being a professional tennis player. And I just look at the solution and go, well, maybe just don't be a professional tennis player. And, and I would say in a normal work environment, if you had an employee who said, every time I'm at the front desk and people start to get upset with me, it makes me shut down. I would say, okay, then let's have you work in the stock room. Right. Yeah, exactly. Let's find a different position for you. Yeah. I mean, we would say that's common sense. We would right. say, yeah. let's find something else for you to do. Now, I have to, I have to applaud the young lady um, that you're mentioning, Ms. Osaka. She's tried to be very transparent. She's totally. tried to be very honest. She's tried to be very forthright. And I applaud that. But I also have, have had the same thought. If this is crushing you, if this is causing so much angst and pain in your life, you have one of two choices. Either one, go create strategies and framework to work through it better. Or two, don't do it. I also agree that she can advocate that some of it be changed 100%. But ultimately for any individual, if something hurts you repeatedly, then you have a choice not to do that. Yep. Um, now, I wanna parenthetically say all things being equal, right? All things being equal, if it's not an abusive environment, if it's right. not you know, yeah. a racist environment, misogynistic environment, but all things being equal, if the front desk freaks you out because you had some trauma earlier in your life, then let's have you work in accounting. Right. And if, if there are people who are willing to work with you, certainly, um, you know, uh, our, our examples of professional athletes, Naomi Osaka made $50.3 million last year. She can walk away and pretty much do whatever she wants. The front desk person and the majority of people that you're trying to help maybe don't have that option or maybe their right. employees don't give them that option. And it's certainly more important for them to pay attention to things that you're doing, I think, um, than the Kyrie Irvings of the world, which is really what aggravates me and boils up and then we go off the off the rails but yeah, i think that the reason it does one reason that it does for a lot of people is one the money people look can't at be it, avoided you know, a lot of people try to push that aside and say but, mental but I health think you kind look of, at it and say hey you got 50 million dollars i'd take a little depression for 50 million dollars i think that's short-sighted it's that's it's, not the, it's yes. certainly it's certainly short-sighted because money creates a lot more problems yeah but but again and this is where I, I have to, to say I'm excited. Ole Miss, great school, athletic school. Do you know that they have an assistant athletic director for me athlete mental health now? No, Look at the work that they're doing at Ohio. And you should have her on. Her name is Josie Nicholson. She's amazing. Um, you, you look at Ohio State and the work that they're doing. More and more universities and colleges are saying, you know what? We have a speed coach. We have a strength coach. We have a position coach. The best availability, not to be trite, the best the best uh, ability is availability. So let's make sure these kids are mentally sound. So you see progress being made and ensuring that we're teaching resiliency skills. Because so back to your, I know I'm long-winded, but to be really quick, back to your Ben Simmons, Kyrie Irving, who is sitting with them and saying, okay, let's not be like this next year. Exactly. Yeah. 
I, I, let's coach you up. We're working on your jump shot. Your jump shot's getting better. You right. know, you, you can shoot a three now, Ben Simmons, but how are we going to make sure that last season, and uh, let's say you were available for 40 games, how can we make sure you're available this season for 60 games? What strategies are we going to implement? Now, I say that without knowing his specific circumstances, without knowing his journey. So again, parenthetically saying, based on a, a, a generic case, you would want to see someone progressing on a regular basis. And the same is true for what we're talking about here, the population, the regular guy. Can I just be better tomorrow than I was yesterday? Mm -hmm. Can I just be better tomorrow than I was yesterday? Yeah, no, it's a great point. And yeah, and you know, these professionals, they are 22, 23 years old and get dumped in this world of pressure with all this money they don't know what to do with. So it, it's certainly a, a hard situation to deal with. But um, yeah, like I just said before, I think, you know, the, the focus that you have going on and, and for the regular person is certainly something that we should be paying attention to more than a lot of people do. Um, and, and we applaud your efforts and we've taken up um, you know, the allotted time here. So I want to throw it back to you just to tell us where can we follow what you have going on? Where can we support it? I know, you know, Ray had mentioned a lot of other efforts that you have going on. Um, let me uh, let them be kids was one that uh, I, I thought was awesome, you know, playgrounds across the world. So just let us know uh, a little bit more about yourself, sure. where we can find all your stuff. In, so you in can go to season, season to save a life.org season to save a life.org season to save a life.org. They can learn everything they can and they can keep up to date on the football journey. I will say this though, boys, if you're a man or you are a spouse or a loved one and you're in crisis and right now, everything that we've talked about resonates with you and you are thinking of harming yourself or you've thought about harming yourself in the last couple of days, go to season to save a life.org, scroll halfway down. There's a phone number right there. It's the national suicide lifeline. And you call that number. And they will get you the help you need as we speak. If your situation is not as dire, but you're saying to yourself, God, I'm always sad. Am I depressed? There's another button right there that says get resources. Click that. Because when you click that, it's going to take you to a plethora of resources and information that can help you. And then finally, one of the toughest parts that I had was no one to talk to. I literally had no one to talk to because I was ashamed. I was ashamed that I was going to tell everybody that I didn't want to live and I was supposed to be this big time whatever. So if you have no one to talk to because there's just no one that would understand, call me. My cell phone number is 775-298-1014, man. We got you. The world is better for you being here. Your kids, your family, your coworkers, your neighbors, we are all better for you being here. If you have no one in your life to talk to, 775-298-1014. I'm not an expert. I know nothing, but I can listen to you and I'll find the expert that you need to help you. That's awesome, man. Powerful stuff, Ian. We really appreciate that. We'll push that out for sure. And we're definitely going to, we're definitely going to prank call you. So <laughs> 100%. Especially when football starts. Yeah. Yeah. Actually uh, uh, go ahead. Ray had one final question here with the uh, sports yeah. coming up. Yeah. So obviously you're a sports fan. I kind of want to lighten the mood real quick while we ended. Uh, what's your team so we can shit on you. Okay. So number one, <laughs> number one, professional football, obviously there's only one team in the professional football, the greatest franchise in the history of mankind, the LA Oakland Vegas Raiders. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> that's, that's I don't know. Fair enough. Yeah. In the NBA, uh, I'm I'm partial to the Golden State Warriors just because oh, I live three, well, it's been three fun. hours away. Yeah, it's been, yeah, good. It's been, it's been fun. Excited, time. Thanks. We're excited yeah. about them taking out those New Englanders. On the hockey side, I'm a big fan of the New York Rangers and the Edmonton Oilers because of my Canadian stuff that I love. And then on the baseball side, you know, and I hate to do this to you boys, but the New York yeah. Yankees, okay. New York Yankees. Yeah. Yeah. Well, been really yeah, fun. This yeah, has yeah, been great. Good. Great. I'll never be cut back. That, cut again. that, cut Thank that, cut that. Yeah, we'll cut it. We'll cut it. We'll cut it. <laughs> we'll just put Patriots, Red Sox all over. We'll just add. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, and I get, thank you so much and thank you for what yeah, you're man. doing and thank you for the powerful message and we'll be sure to push, uh, you know, all the links and everything they have going, going on. Thank so you. thank you. Good luck much. with the tryouts too coming up, man. Yeah. All right, man. Take care boys. You as Take well. Well, Ray, uh, some are more powerful than others. And that one was a, uh, that, that one got, good. that one got good. deep quick. Very quick. That was Very good, quick. Though. 
Very good. Though. Um, I want to applaud ourselves for keeping it light, though, on the in-betweens. Well, yeah, you got it. You, you got it. <laughs> and also, I've been thinking about it this whole time since the cold open, and you called me fat. And you know what? I am fat. And I'm going to take that, and I'm going to call Ian and let him know you said that. <laughs> or maybe I'll just hit the treadmill tonight. <laughs> no, I'm going to have, no, have another beer. beer. The show. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> nap i feel great you took a nap today yeah Whew. um that's impressive on a work day thank you sneak that in Dude, it was nice 5 30 to 6 15 baby i feel like a new man oh you've started your uh, four days oh yeah 5 30 to 6 15 but you got a nap in no, no, no. I took a nap from 5.30 p.m. to 6.15 p.m. Oh, your day ends at 5. Or what are you? 2.30. 4.30 you, to 2.30. Are you doing 10? Good. Stop doing that with your fucking nose in your face. Ugh. <laughs> what are you brushing up there? That's not like, what are you doing? Just itching your nostril? Napkin? Yeah, but you're just brushing your nose like a paintbrush. You weren't like picking or uh, pulling? No. no, just. What does that do? Oh, that makes me feel better. <laughs> now I feel embarrassed because now you're just judging me. That's a very weird way. No one messes with their nose with the up flick like that. Oh, I do all the time. Is it just itchy? You have Sometimes nose hairs? I do the, Sometimes I do the knuckles. Sure, I'll do this because my, I have nose hairs and they itch and they get like uh, caught up. I do Sometimes this. The mo- like I, Sometimes I have a very the, old man like this thing. Sometimes the mustaches, mustache hairs goes right up in the nose. And yeah, sometimes it gets... Fucking uh, hate that. Yeah um if they ever wanted to like like abolish waterboarding just make the uh men grow mustaches and make their nose hairs tickle or nose tickle iphone 11 you not pro you fancy bitch still rocking the eight that still works yeah buddy wait tits i've seen on this thing (laughs) they're not gonna let you trade that in Sir, no, Sir. no, no. Uh-uh. Uh, there's a chance that they, this could fall to someone <laughs> under 18, and we can't take the risk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, sir. We just can't take the risk. Frankly, it shouldn't be seen by anybody. <laughs> oh, here he is. And who's this Bill Gately that's in your contacts? Yeah, he's uh, if you know his whereabouts, please let us know. See how I didn't fat shame you when you got up to get a beer? Because I'm not fat. You're fat. <laughs> no. We can, we, I gotta let this guy in. I'm Maybe a little fat. Should... No, I saw your face. So you didn't want to see you anymore. Gentlemen, how are you? 